Welcome to In-Game Chat for Saturday, January 27th, 2018. It's Season 12, Episode 3. Yeah. All right. I'm Jay Scott. Or, I'm Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Matt James. Yeah, exactly. Good. That's a good one. Um, <laughs> before this show, I did another show about at about 3 o'clock this afternoon. Or about 2 o'clock, 2.45 or so. I did a different show this afternoon, so... Got some mix up with my names. Anyway, welcome to the show, everyone. It is uh, episode three of season twelve. Let me do the board real quick. The really boring part of the board thing. Clap. There. I have to do that for the it's sound. Bad enough when you have so many different aliases to go around that you mix them all up. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot to keep track of. I know. So now it's just I was watching your um, get your iPad open there. Yeah. And I was watching that because I wanted to see what the delay was because yeah. I. Had I'd flip the switch so yeah. it would go to the cameras for us, and I, was, I kept watching. And I was like, it's about like quite a long a 30 delay. 30 or so? Yeah, it's quite a long delay. Well, they just updated the app, and I used to be able to just have it where it's just the chat room, and I prefer that. Yeah. Can you not have that now? I don't know how to. Yeah. Let me see. Sure. Anyways. Let's see. I'm, I'm, oh, look at this. Yeah, I know. This is interesting. So those tuning in, you could... Uh, Follow us on. Uh, if you no, go okay, to, I'll get to that in a minute. Right. I'll get to that in a minute. I'm just I've trying gotta, to fill the time. Right. I gotta figure out how the. I, huh? Okay, <laughs> this is. Look at this. I can move it all over the place. Yeah. I can go in the. Can we go up? Can we go? We can't go up. Weird. All right now, I can't figure out how to make it big again. Click on it. There it goes. Does yeah. that and then settings. I didn't see it in it the says settings. Audio only. I guess. Yeah, I don't know, man. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. They, they keep on changing the app around and whatever. Sorry, we're playing with toys. Uh, if you'd like yeah. to get in touch with us, our phone number is 334-272-9228. 334-272-9228. We are uh, over at ingamechat.net. You can find out everything you need to know about us, with the exception of, I think, where we live, maybe. But uh, where we, we live, we could add that if you want it. Yeah, I mean, really. you know. Where we live on the internet, though, is at ingamechat.net. You can find all the links there to watch us live right now on Twitch if you want to. The link is there. If you want to go to Facebook and interact with us there, you can. The link is there also. If you use whatever Google social media thing is, we got one of those. Is, is it G plus? Yeah. Whatever that was. I don't is that know. still alive? Exactly. For some people, it is. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Think about social media. You're open to every. I, we don't have a. We don't have a Snapchat yet. I. We have an Instagram, that. but I don't think a link is over there for it. Yeah. And I haven't used it since I think E3. The last time I went to E3. I'm still waiting for you to set up a Tinder for us. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're a nerdy show looking for another nerdy show. We like uh, long walks on the beach. No, we don't. You're right. We that's don't. Not that's not anything. That's that, outside. That's, that's nothing that yeah. we would like to do. No. <laughs> No. We like the glow of a computer monitor. Yeah, yeah. We're right, trying to figure out why apps change things and then mm-hmm. try to figure out a way to get them back the way they were. Uh, so, Anyways. But if you like us, our number is 334-272-9228. Give us a ring on the party line. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Do the sultry voice for that. <laughs> uh, Twitter. Number. Yeah. Twitter, you can find us at InGameChat. So, uh, again, there's a link to that at our, our 
at endgamechat.net. Just go there. It's your one-stop shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, Twitch mm. TV is where you can find us. You can watch us right now online and listen to us and, and join in the chat room like everybody who's uh, in there right now. AC Wraith is in there. Multal is in there. What, what? Um, I'm letting it load to see what other viewers. Probably just them. See, I can't even uh, do that. Chris play, cri, cri, Crispies? <laughs> Chris, Crispies. Crispies. <laughs> well, I didn't know if that was an L or an I. <laughs> my age ain't so good anymore. Uh, Can you borrow my glasses? I think it's Crisby's. Uh, and Lethal Migraine and Retro. Oh, yeah, Lethal. Retro Ed. Retroed uh, in there as well. So yeah. hi, everybody in the chat room. Yeah, join in the chat room, uh, direct our conversation. You know, let us know what you're thinking. And you kind of will, and you probably will today, because uh, there's really not a lot to talk about. Um, I do have some things open here, and I do have some things from last week that we never actually got to. Like PAX? Uh, I mean, I, I like... You know, I skimmed the surface of PAX, really. I really didn't deep dive into it. Not that there was a lot to deep dive into, but Mm -hmm. I would like to talk about PAX. And I'm hoping, like uh, we were talking about last time, last week after the show, all of us going to PAX next year. That was. It was a nice conversation that, that we be... had. I liked having that conversation because it sounded like we were actually probably going to do it. But it was, uh-huh. it's a year. It's a and year that gives away. Us enough, that gives us enough time to, to start change your mind. Money. <laughs> well, I was thinking save money and make plans, but right. you know, we could see which one of us thinks the glass is half full. Dude, let's go. If I can get everybody, that would get... be awesome. Have like a hotel, you know, episode like we, you know we did at the in the past. Uh, that would be fun, yeah. Yeah, I haven't done one of those in a while. Bunch a whole, whole whole bunch of people in a room doing a podcast, eating pizza. Yeah, that'd be great. We should do that. We should totally do that. I'm an idea man. Yeah, yeah it's it's that's why you get the the, yeah, the bigger bucks ones. than I get. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. I really don't know what you get. Paid. <laughs> you don't know what I get paid, so I have no idea. Exactly. Uh, I know I get paid for this. The love and admiration of our followers. Oh, Multile had planned to call in later if I had played Pony Island, but unfortunately, Multile, I have not played Pony Island. I have. Yeah, Matt has played it. It's um, weird. Give, like me, it. give me some credit for stretching outside of my comfort zone and picking up Monster Hunter World. Yeah. So, and I'll talk about that. That looks interesting. It had a steel book, so. Well, that, <laughs> yeah. You know, they got, they, they, they found their target, you know, put a steel book Your on Your kryptonite. It. Some people in there that'll get that, yep. It kind of, sort of is. Now oh. there are like Tekken Seven has a steel book that I have oh, no, but I have no desire to own. No, if it's something I, I think if it's something that you have a modicum of interest in, yeah. and a steel book, that's just a deal breaker. If it's something you don't care about one bit, then you're. I don't think yeah. any amount of steel bookage is going to be like. And I was feeling like over. you know, I kept hearing a lot, and I said this. I think I said this last week, and or maybe I was just saying it to myself. Was like, man, if you keep talking about this monster in the world, it's going to drag me in. People are talking about a game. I'm going to be sucked into the, to the what is it called? The zeitgeist? Yes. I'm going to be sucked into that because people are talking about it, and mm-hmm. I want to know what they're talking about, and I want to see what this thing is. Plus, we're in a little bit of a drought. Now, I don't yeah. count a drought as, I don't use the drought as an excuse because, just as mentioned in the chat room there, I have Pony Island to play, but I did not play it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't use a drought as an excuse to buy a new game because I have plenty of other games to play. Oh, I have bunch. Yeah. Wolf 2 that I yeah. haven't finished. I still, I'm yeah, still finish working that. on Origins that I haven't uh, done it. But to I be, actually platinum that. Fantastic. For, I think this is the f- maybe the first time I've platinumed a, a PS4 game or a PlayStation game in general. My first platinum on a PlayStation game. I don't know where that goes back to. I can't remember which one was my first platinum. But so I'm going to go with Retroed. I think Flower was my first platinum. Flower, okay. Yeah, I mean, that goes way back. Yeah, not Retro. Ed. I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm making a call. It's Retroed, and he could correct me. That's or right. they could correct me in the chat room. Um, yeah, just got a suggestion that, you know, if we do go, we got to go to Big Lou's and eat that. Oh, my goodness, yes. Some odd 60-inch pizza. Um, yeah. So, yeah. We can't. We have to eat it there. We can't take it back to the room because it's too big. I, don't th- I think, yeah. We have to eat it there. I think uh, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's. It, it is kind of a drought. I actually went into a GameStop today, which is, uh, man, I haven't been one of those in a while. What long. are you going in there for? What do you need? What are you doing? Asking uh, when, um, uh, it was close to, I had an event uh, earlier, the 501st, mm-hmm. and so it was close to that, and I was waiting for the other guy to come in from uh, Auburn area, just killing time. Oh, were you in Auburn? No, uh, it was actually here in town. Oh, okay. But he was driving in from Auburn. Are you at the East Chase location? No, uh, was, um, Harrison. I mean, actually, Ann Street. Mm. One. That's where Jason works. I think that's. I think Jason, Jason still works there. 
He used to work at the Prattville store, but now he, he moved up there to this. No, one. he's on the bypass. Oh, was he in the? Okay. Yeah. I thought anyway, he was the, anyway, yeah, let's go. But, ahead. Uh, yeah, so um, I, I go in there. I'm like, hey, when's uh, Ace Combat Seven coming out? And like, uh, we still have a placeholder. You have date. a phone. I know, but I was there. I was waiting. It, yeah, I was looking around. I just figured I'd ask. But yeah, it was a placeholder date. Okay. So that nothing official yet. We got a date on God of War. I saw that April the something. I wish I could get into that series, but I. I'm good with it. Guess I, what? They got Steelbook. Uh, <laughs> well, there you go. I just I never got into God of War. I just it's one that I uh, same with Gears of War. You know. Well, I'll be honest. I never got into the the myth the mythos the story. Yeah. I never I never got into the um, you know like when I play God of when I play the new God of War that doesn't have a subtitle, so it's kind of odd to call it God of War again. Is it just yeah? Um, just, it's just God of War. Well, uh, I guess like Tomb Raider, they sort of just. A little bit, yeah. Reboot, uh, I guess. When I play God of War, I don't ever think about the story so far. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do I Previously rem- on Do God I remember of War. what happened in one, two, three? <laughs> any of the handhelds or something else that came out? Do I? No, no, no. I don't. I don't stick with that. I don't. About the only one I've ever followed, I think, would be Uncharted from story to story to story. But they never really. They never made it convoluted, <laughs> and they no. never. They never. And it's, made I don't it think it's really to, too heavily on the previous ones. You it doesn't. It doesn't. And God of War doesn't really do that yeah. either. But God of War is so steeped in uh, Greek mythology, so there's a lot there to uh, to remember and to think about. Because originally, and I, and I really, and now that I'm thinking about it, in God of War three, uh, that was his entire family was killed. Because um, I think at the end of that one, you're trying to find your wife and your kids because. They've been they've been they've been killed, or whatever, because he's having some kind of fever dream. I don't remember what it is, but it's very strange. But and so in this one, he's got a son, and I don't know, you know, what how does he have a kid? I don't know. Um, and a beard. Well, obviously, time has passed. So maybe it's a new son. And now they seem to be going in a more Norse mythology thing. They're moving from Greek yeah. to Norse. I don't know. We'll hmm. find out in April when it releases. Yeah. But I've never been one to be really hung up on it. I just want to play your game, fight your giant monsters, and do some sweet combos, and that's about it. You know, finish your game and be done with it. Uh, I've never owned a God of War game until now. Um, and again, because it comes with a steelbook. Those of you who are into marketing who are listening to the show, which means none of you. Um, <laughs> you, n- you never know. No. Steal you, you gotta you find the thing that people collect and then put it in there. I've been seeing a lot of vinyl soundtracks being released. Oh yeah, I've seen a lot of steel books coming out with now, their stuff. For me, like steel books with good art. Yeah, just the fact that it's a steel book. You know, like the Star Wars movies, right? You know, the the ones they did the we character talked about faces. This. Yeah, we talked about this. Uh, um, Oh. I, I am a huge, we've talked about this plenty of times, I'm a huge collector of steel books. Yeah. You guys know this. I, I collect them. And for those who don't know what a steel book is, it is just simply a different way that, uh, it's a different case for uh, a piece of media, a DVD, a video game, something like that. Think about the DVD boxes you pick up at a store. Well, these are metal, and they have artwork on the front, and it's very different from what you're used to. It's not plastic, it's metal, um, and... It uh, and and that's the appeal, but the but so so my appeal to it goes even further with, uh, number one is the art good is mm-hmm. what they're putting on the front of this thing really is it worth, worth it? Yeah, is it worth? And and understand, I'm thinking about this right now, but understand that I'm saying this, and yet what do I do with my steel books when I get them? I put them on the shelf to where only you can see the, the spine. spine. <laughs> So what good is that? Do- I well, do have plans. I have plans. Any other way, it's a little hard because they take up more real estate. They do, but I have plans about what I'm like going to do. Like a shadow box? No, 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 no. Um, uh, basically, Are you gonna, like, tiny wallpaper? picture frames all over the... Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because magnets. How do they work? Well, you put them on the wall, and you, you, you fasten a magnet to the wall, a little flat piece of magnet, and then you can just pop the steel book on it. And the steel books are magnetic? They're metal. Aluminum is a metal. Yeah, I know, but, but they, but they, it's not no. magnetic. No, they're magnetic. Yes, okay, they will, they will. I didn't know exactly if it was like steel or if it was like some alloy or you know what they use. It's not the aluminum. Product. Okay, <laughs> it's not aluminium. Um, so yeah. Anyway, is the artwork good enough? And then is it a is it something I really want to own? Is it a piece of media that I really want to own? Mm-hmm. Um, 
Tekken 7 is a good ex- ex- uh, example of this. I think the artwork on Tekken 7 is probably really nice, but I have no desire to own Tekken 7. Yeah. Uh, I might buy it for RJ for a birthday. Be like, can I keep you? Just get the disc. Can I keep the box? You know, something like that. Probably already has it. I, I'm sure he does. It's not really, but that's my point. Is yeah. that that's kind of how I would go about it. I really don't want it. And uh, so yeah, there's there's certain things that that go with with getting a steel book. But I am a sucker for steel books uh, uh, on a on a last minute basis or on a, on a even on a basis where it's um, limited. I was like, hey, there's only five of these, or there's only, you know, there's a really certain amount of these, and so get them all you can. Uh, and I think when I picked them up at Best Buy, there was only two more steelbooks left okay. for people to get. So uh, I didn't even know. When you go to Best Buy's website to, to look up the game, there was no mention of a steelbook whatsoever. So I did a Google search, and I found Best Buy forums where people said, do I get the steelbook with this? And, and you're thought, like, okay. excuse me? So there must be a steel. So I go there, and I get the game. And I walk over to the to the guy, and I was like, yeah, "Do you know if there was a steel book with this thing?" He's like, "Hey, you know, I think there were." And so he, him, and this other dude got on this hunt, <laughs> and it wasn't in the cage places, and really? it wasn't in the back. And so they start scouring the shelves, and they find the steel books on the shelves. And, Interesting. Uh, yeah, they were really nice. It was fantastic. Well, thanks. And I appreciate it. Like people. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but uh, for marketer people, if you find something that's like a collectible thing, like mm-hmm. if you put a fidget spinner in something, I don't know, Tide Pods, whatever the thing the kids are doing <laughs> oh, these geez. days. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. Put it in your thing when you're selling it and, uh, uh, you know, bump it up to like a here's a collector's edition version. Um, people yeah. will buy it. People will buy it who have no desire whatsoever to buy it. I have no, here's a great, another great example. I don't want Far Cry. I do not want Far Cry 5. What? I don't want Far Cry 5. I have no interest in Far Cry 5. All right. I've I mean, never had interest in Far Cry Each his own, 5. I guess. It has not appealed to me whatsoever except so, for the fishing part. So waiting for the that. The little fishing mini game is like one that I really enjoyed. Yeah? Uh, when It's like the only th- like E3, they're like, hey, this game doesn't come out until next year. What do you want to play? Uh, can I fish? Uh, Everyone's like running around shooting people like, oh, I'm just fishing on them. <laughs> apparently so much that they made a game out of it. For the person who got who brought in the biggest fish during the mini game, you got yeah. a you got a cup or a, a mug or something special. And if you brought in the smallest, because you could do that too, you got the same thing. So it was either the biggest or the smallest. And um, and yeah, so apparently that's how uh, popular the fishing part of it was for Far Cry Five. And I don't know if that means there's something wrong with your game where you've designed this entire world to, for people to. Uh, to play and experience and the story that goes with it and all these different mechanics. And then only the only thing people do is go fish. What does that say? Uh, but I have, no, I have no interest in Far Cry 5. But uh, there is a company uh, of which I support a great deal because they uh, release uh, movie poster art. And they Mondo? release, they release steelbooks, Mondo. Um, and... Mondo has ha, Mondo Mondo has a special line of steel books that are mm-hmm. numbered, and that even makes it worse. Even yeah, for me, that's more crack because they started with zero zero. Oh yeah, yeah. There's zero zero, and then it goes through I think eighteen right now huh. uh, that they've done, and now they're dipping their feet into video game steel books, and they're doing that first with Far Cry Five. So I'm gonna own Far Cry Five. I don't want it, but I'm going to I'll take it. it. Well, you, will you buy it from me? Oh. <laughs> I'm not giving it away. Well, then. If I buy it, I'm keeping it. I'll, actually, I'll, I'll... I'm actually buying the PC version. That, well, I was going to say, that's what I'm going to pick it up on as a PC. Right, which means that you, I wouldn't... I don't think I'd... Yeah, I guess I would. I'd get a code. Yeah. But if I buy it directly from my Uplay, it'll probably just attach to my Uplay account. Most likely. Yeah. Hmm. Enough rambling. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you right there, Lethal Migraine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so, the uh, here's the situation with my gaming thing. We didn't talk about this at all last week. Uh, okay. We were busy with the 500th episode, but um, since returning from PAX... Um, from then until last night when I started playing Monster Hunter World, mm-hmm. I had not touched a video game. Oh. Work has been... That busy? That bad. Uh, I know the feeling. It's been busy for me, too. I mean, let's... Okay, let's put it into perspective. So I play I play my 3DS on the on the flight back Yeah. Um, here in town, and that was Monday. 
I get home, I take a nap, uh, wash clothes, get ready, whatever, and go to bed. Get up the next day, I go to work. Um, and work, I've got a lot to catch up on. Well, I get done with work, I go home, and then it snows yeah. the next day here, which shuts down everything. Mm-hmm. And it was a pretty good snow. Yeah, I'm at home working on work stuff, because I can't be here to work on work stuff. And then that afternoon, I drive into work, I spend the night here at the radio station, because I'm afraid I won't be able to get in until later in the morning if I go back home. Because You're of the probably roads. right on that. So I spend the night here at the radio station, that's Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Then Friday, I think I'm back at home. What did I do Friday? Friday, I got ready for the show uh, the next the, for the next day because of that's what we were doing. And uh, then we did the show Saturday, and then Sunday, I didn't do anything. Um, Sunday, I actually fell asleep. I woke up, posted the show, watched, was it Ash versus Evil Dead? Yeah. A little bit of that, and then fell asleep back in the bed again. It was a really horrible day. As far as like trying to stay awake or trying to do any, I just I didn't do anything. And then last week was killer as far as work is concerned. Mm-hmm. I had a deadline for Friday that is now extended until Monday, but I had a deadline for Friday and that consumed me for the entire week uh, with work. And it was, yeah, I hadn't touched a video game. I hadn't touched a video game until last night with Monster Hunter World for, that was almost two weeks. Um, for nearly two weeks, I hadn't touched a video game. So, uh, it was yeah. It's it's been a it's been a while, and it's been it's been a week and a half and two weeks whatever. It's been kind of rough. Yeah. So I'm glad to uh, I'm glad that deadline is now behind me. I'm glad that I am jumping back into gaming again with Monster Hunter World, and I'm going to talk to you about that coming up. There was stuff we didn't get to talk about last week, like Nintendo getting into the cardboard business mm-hmm. with their Labo things. Yeah, and, you know, we didn't go into any. We didn't talk about any of that. Um, Weird. I know there was uh, Star Citizen raising more money last week. Uh, again, oh, out, outra- yeah, I mean all that stuff. Stardew Valley getting multiplayer, um, which I find. I mean, there's all these things we can talk about. There's just a lot yeah. last week that we didn't talk about. Fortnite break broke two million concurrent players. Uh, the uh, Kansas Swatter, that guy, mm-hmm. remember him? He's got an involuntary manslaughter charge against him. Too um, bad, it's just that. I know it should be worse. A there's there's just a ton of stuff. So and then there was stuff this week as well, not as much, but there was still stuff this week, also so that we're going to get into. Uh, right now we're at uh, yeah sure we'll take a break here. When we come back, we will talk about what little bit that I played. Hopefully, what a lot Matt has played. I have no idea, but we'll yeah. find out from him what's been going on there. And uh, we'll uh, yeah we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about too. Give us a call three three four two seven two nine two two eight gaming related I should say. Um, try. To keep it that way. <laughs> Try. Try to keep it that way. We'll be back with more in game chat after this. Music right now from a game that just released this week, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Um this is is it Goku? I don't know yeah. the names. Yeah. It was either Goku or Goku. Goku. Yeah. Goku Black theme, I think is the name of this one. Anyway, we'll be back with more in game chat after this.
Okay, I think I might know. Welcome back to In Game Chats. I'm Scott along with Matt. Matt. I'm going to take a guess on this one. RJ is not here with us this week. He's at a convention. Yeah, up in Birmingham. Yes. You're taking a guess on what this is? I'm going to take a guess. Throw it out there. You'll probably be right. Is it uh, Blood Dragon? That's it. I thought so. Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Speaking of not wanting to buy a Far Cry game. That was uh, appropriately... The game felt like this song. Oh, yeah. I like it. I thought once I downloaded it, I said, you know what? I should just scrap my ideas and play uh, the soundtrack to Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Did you actually play the game? No. I have it. It's one of those, you know. Trust me, if it's a PC game, it's like, I've got it. I haven't played it yet. That's how it works for me. I I like how they got Michael Bean to do a voice in it. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, it's straight up, they knew what they wanted to go with for cheesy factor, and they went with it. Of course they did. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, they knew what they were doing. Yeah. When they did it. I mean, the trailer, you know, the trailer is uh, catered to that sort of thing. Nostalgia so. cheese. Your discipline uh, church is on in there. Um, and that's, hey, church. That's uh, Chris. No, not Chris. Um, um, church. No, no, no. Hang on. Uh, Stilson. Um, is it Chris? No. He's going to tell me in a minute what his name is. Stilson. He's, he's going to be Stilson? embarrassed. Something like He's fantastic. He's like, really, he's a, Scott? Really? He's a fantastic like photographer and videographer, <laughs> and uh, he's he posts. Um, I got his last name, Stilson. Um, yeah, uh, he went with me. Uh, he and I went to E3 together and uh, reported for Reddit's okay. gaming, our gaming thing one year. And uh, Carson, I was like Chris. Still, nope, Carson. Carson, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, glad to see him in there. You missed. Yeah. You're in our five. You're in our five hundred first, man. Our big five hundred was last week. Um, should have been there for that one. Yeah, I haven't shared that video. We did a Facebook Live video last week, and apparently, we did the entire two hour show Facebook Live, uh, just passing the phone around to people um, as we switched out, and mm-hmm. you know, when I would need to, when I would need to have my hands or whatever, put my headphones on, stuff like that. So. Anyway, welcome back to the show. That was music from Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. And uh, we're going to go over the games that we played. I really don't have a lot, man. Uh, I'll talk about Monster Hunter World. I played that. Um, All right. Good job. You know, if, if we're talking about in between when I got back from PAX and now, I played Monster Hunter World. I am still getting into it. I am still trying to figure it out. There is a lot to I, take in with that game. I heard the character creation was crazy. It kind of is, you know. I said this in the in in our G Talk, our, our, our chat group there. I said, um, uh, I said that the uh, the I said, hey, this thing's the character creator's kind of deep here. But that was just me looking initially at it. I was like, wow, there's a lot of stuff here because there's a lot of choices as mm-hmm. far as like eyebrows, nose, eyes, uh, facial hair, makeup, the shape of your face. There's a bunch of stuff right there. But. Um, it, it is still it is still deep. It's not as deep as I was really initially thinking, okay. but it is still pretty deep as far as the things you can do. Deeper because than some uh, some other games, uh, I I the gold standard of character creation goes back to City of Heroes for me. Okay, um, I can I, I cannot and have not found a character creator that rivals what City of Heroes did. Um, and there's nothing out there that I can find anywhere close to what they were able to do. Um, with the character creator. All right. It was amazing. Um, so nothing, uh, nothing I've seen. But this is, this is pretty deep. It was, but it was, it was, once I got done creating my character, which took me nearly 30 minutes or so, um, just going through hairstyles and then how you wanted them to, their voices, uh, and their voices only consist of grunts and, you know, like when they jump or get hit or something Mm -hmm. like that. Um, the uh, then I got to then I got to create a cat. <laughs> yeah, I got to I got to uh, you get a companion, a cat companion, uh, and it, they call it a palico, um, and it's it's a cat who fights along with you. Is that like a pal calico? I guess so. Yeah, and it, and it's and it's a cat, and 
you get to uh, you get to create like the pattern on the cat, what the color of the cat is, <laughs> what kind of ears the cat has. You get to change the the voice of the cat because he doesn't talk; he just does cat noise. Meow, meow, yeah, meows. You can change a high pitch, low pitch, average pitch. You can, um, yeah. There's so many things you do, and then once you're done with that, you get to name it. Um. So, what was your persona? Uh, my fursona? Good job. <laughs> uh, well, who was, um, I think Josh, his is named like Purgatory. Oh, Purgatory. Nice. Mine's named uh, Jiminy Whiskers. <laughs> Gosh. I might have to get this game just so I can come up with this witty cat name. Well, I, t- I talked about this in the chat room, and James was like, you know what? You wouldn't be faulted to think that that's all you do in the game if you were watching Twitch, because apparently... That's the thing? That's all people were streaming was like, let's change the cat's colors and all this other stuff. They weren't actually playing the game. They were doing the cat thing. So it didn't take me as long. The cat, The, <laughs> the internet is known for doing the cat thing. I know. Uh, the cat stuff doesn't have uh, the. It's not as deep as far as the creation stuff as it is for your character, your main character. But where it, where it also, I don't want to say excels, but where mm-hmm. there is also uh, refinement and things that can be different is when you craft armor. Okay. For your cat. Um, cat armor. Yeah, and weapons and things like that. He fights along right. He just fights along with you. You know, he's a palico, and you don't have to worry about him dying, as far as I know. I mean, I would think he would at least have nine lives. Mm, yeah, I guess so. Uh, but yeah, so um, <laughs> how's the the cat? The cat name was tough because I was coming up with different ones. Um, I was it was going to be called like Captain Whiskus uh, after the food, mm-hmm. and then I then I was like, I don't know. Then I wanted to call him like. John Bobob or some just regular old name, you know. And then as I was typing in, like, it was going to be Jim Whiskus. Jim Whiskus, you know. I wanted to give him kind of like a, uh, uh, some like Los Angeles 1940s detective man. It's Jim Whiskus on the case. All right. <laughs> give him a fedora and all this other stuff. Nice. But then as I was typing that in, I came up with Jiminy Whiskers. Which I love so much. Uh, yeah. I love Jiminy Whiskers so much. Uh. <laughs> so, uh, if you have, and a again, good here, cat pun name, put it in the right. chat room. Here we are, and I just complained about Twitch doing nothing but doing cat. And here we've spent way too long talking about the cat aspect of uh, Monster Hunter World. It's mainly because I really can't describe much, much more than that. Have you played a Monster Hunter before? No, me neither. Yeah. So, so I can't, I really, dude, I can't, there's I a like, lot. So what's it like? <laughs> it's really, um, I don't know what to compare it to because. Do you have to know about the Monster Hunter universe? At first it feels a little Square Enixy. You know, it looks, okay. it feels a little Final Fantasy a little bit. All right. Um, from the design and from some of the big cutscenes, and uh, how many, cu- and, and just sort of the. You know, it fe- it feels a lot like Final Fantasy. Um, it, th- it doesn't feel like a Capcom game. It feels like it's a Square Enix game. Okay. Uh, it's always been Capcom, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's got the, um, you know, it's got the cutscenes. It's got the giant monsters. Final Fantasy does the same thing with those. It's got the, I don't know, they're cats, and they're serving you beer at a bar or something they they cook dinner for you and all this other stuff so i, I don't I, it's just rather odd in 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 places so anyway you go through this you go to the main hub and the main hub is gigantic by the way it's huge uh the the place where you go to turn in quests or to buy or forge armor and all this other i would just, want like the cat massive. hub to be called the scratching post it's not but their big oven their kiln is a big uh, cat head um, but it's not called, I don't know, it's Canteen, and I don't know, I don't know if they've got a name for it or not. You might could name it, I'm not sure. That's what I'd want mine to be called. Um, but the hub area is, is gigantic, and there's a lot to do there. Uh, me and Spigot and Josh were playing a little bit last night, trying to figure out the mechanics of doing an online thing together, you know, hmm. quests and stuff. Yeah. Figuring that whole thing out. Uh, it's really tough, because I kept trying to, like, 
I wasn't trying to put destiny into the thing, but I kept trying to find the similarities so I could find some kind of uh, some kind of hold that I could that I could you know wrap my head around. Okay, that's how this mechanic works. It's like this, but I couldn't find anything like that to relate it to to destiny and, and something like that. It was just completely uh, new to me. The monsters don't have health bars. That was odd. So when you're out there fighting them, you really never know how much more you've got to go because there is no health bar to show you that you're making progress. There's damage points, but that's about it. And I was fighting a monster last night, and it took me forever. Spigot and Josh were listening to me. They were off doing their own thing because they're way ahead of me in level. I'm, I'm low on the totem pole. And here I was trying to hunt this thing down. It's like, it's not dying. Why is it not dying? It's just, you got to keep hitting it. You got to keep doing it. And I kept doing it. Finally, he, you'd fight them, and then at some point they kind of run off, and you have to chase them again. Um, and at this one point that he was running off, he started limping. And I was like, okay, fine. We're almost there. Thank God. So I caught up to him, and it was another, like, 20 minutes, even after the limping part, that I finally took him down. Hmm. And, huh. I just, it would be nice to have a health bar to know that I'm making progress, but apparently that just is not how Monster Hunter World works. Okay. That's not how the Monster Hunter franchise works. You don't get health bars. You get a health bar. And monsters don't get a health bar. So I'm still, I'm still figuring it out All right. and trying to get through it and see, see how it goes. I'm having a lot of help from, uh, like from Spigot and from Josh last night, and there's a lot of guides online that can kind of teach you these things. It's not that I really want to... I'm not looking to break into the Monster Hunter franchise. I'm just looking to enjoy the new game that they've released. So I'll soak up the information I need to soak up to have that done, and then I'll forget about it. So, um, uh, Moltil said it's uh, kind of like um, Witcher 3. It's been compared to that. Huh. So for what that's worth. I love Witcher 3 a whole lot more than I do Monster Hunter World right now. Well, maybe like you're just getting into it. And yeah. Then, you know? Yeah, I, I like Witcher 3 a lot more. Um, let's go to the phones. Talk to... Oh, we got another from somebody else on the line, too. Let's go talk to Chris. Hey, Chris. What's going on? I'm trying to figure out how to play Monster... I'm, I'm sure you're all into it, right? Well, I haven't ever got into it either, but I was kind of thinking, well, I may want to get it down the road, but uh, if you enjoyed it so far, considering what you've been going through... Yeah, have I enjoyed it so far considering what I've been going through? I haven't had the desire to throw it away yet. You know, I haven't haven't come to that desire where it's like I just give up. I can't figure this thing out. I mean, I'm it's I don't necessarily know that I want to say that I'm having fun with it. It's not that I'm not having fun with it. It's not that I'm not it's not frustrating me yet. It's still very early in the game for me to tell you that I'm enjoying my time with it or that I'm hating it. I can't I can't really give you that assessment just yet. Um, I can, uh, I suppose the credit I could give it is that I want to keep going. So um, I want to keep going and kind of hopefully, hopefully find that hook. That's good for a game that you want to keep playing it. Well, you, I've got to find a hook and if I can't find the hook, then it isn't going to last. And so yeah. if I can find that one thing that hooks me that it's like, ah, now it all comes together. You do this to get this, to keep going and doing this. And I'm trying to figure that all out. And oh, it wow. has not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what system did you get for the PC? Uh, no, PC doesn't get it for like another eight months. Yeah. Oh, so you got it on PS4? Play yeah, I got it on PS4. And I got a Steelbook version of it. So, I mean, PC just don't get Steelbook versions because um, they're all download codes. Yeah. So, yeah, I got a uh, I got the Steelbook version of it. And, yeah, so I'm playing on PS4. I may end up picking it up later, too, uh, down the road. Uh, do you know how many, uh, is there like a party system when you get together with your friends? or is it? Yes, there can be up to four people. Up to four, so uh, so you you know you got you said you and your three friends. Yeah, it'll be you and three others. Okay. Yeah, I was wanting to know. I might get on there, and I you know if one of your other friends is not on, I might join up with you sometime down the road if I ever get it. And apparently, we have what their version of guild, which is squads or clans, which is squads. We have an in, in, spigot started an in-game chat squad. Okay. And so there is an in-game chat monster hunter squad that you can join up with. Squad goals. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, if you do get it, let us know. We'll get you into the squad. <laughs> That's just weird. <laughs> that just, just sounds saying. weird. I'll get you into the squad. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, if you get it, let us know. 
Okay. You'll probably you'll probably you'll probably latch onto this thing much better than I will. Yeah, it seemed like a, it looked like it was going to be pretty fun. I just didn't. I watched like you know some of the preview that they had at E3, you know, a long time ago, you know, and I saw the only thing I saw of it, and it looked pretty fun then. But yeah, mm-hmm. I may around, get around to getting it. No, oh, man. What have oh, you been and, playing and, though? And uh, yeah, I've been playing uh, a beat uh, uh, Elix that I've been playing for a while. I finished it up. Uh, I started in the the DSS that was free on PlayStation 4 with the PlayStation Plus, so I okay. played it some. And then uh, Lost Fear just came in, you know, on Tuesday, so I've been playing Lost Fear for the last couple of days. All right. All right. That's been pretty fun so far. Well, fantastic, man. We appreciate you calling in. Like I said, if you get Monster in the World, let us know. Okay. And then on another side note, uh, I remember hearing, you know, on when you were – on, during the week on the radio and I, with Greg and them, uh, I heard about you know y'all talking about the uh, the uh, cricket dust all the time, and I finally decided I better try some of this and see how it is. And of course, I love it. Have you tried cooking it into the bacon? I don't really cook. Um, <laughs> with that, with that sort of thing, I just put it on my food after I've made it. Oh, okay. uh, I don't really use it to cook. I just put it on food after it's ready to eat, kind of like salt or pepper. Um, you know, or or, or uh, what's that? Butter flakes, whatever that stuff is. I can't Mrs. Mrs. Butter. Mrs. Dash. Yeah, something like that. You know, just to see. I use it as a seasoning after the meal is done, which putting it in there while you cook is probably even better. But uh, yeah, talk to somebody that cooks. But yeah, regularly uh, anyway. Yeah, but I, I thought I, that you couldn't improve bacon flavor. It's I was wrong. It's really, really good. It's, it, it is good on that. It really is. <laughs> Well, we appreciate. Oh, we lost Milton. We appreciate you calling, Chris. Thank you. All right, we'll see y'all later. All right, bye-bye. bye bye. Bye. He said he'll call back. Okay, Molta, call back if you can. Uh, so that's what I've been playing, Monster Hunter World, and I'm trying to get used to that. And so that's about it. Now, if we go back to PAX, I mm-hmm. told you I played uh, Omen Sight, yeah, which is made by the same guys that did um, uh, uh, stories. Path, yeah, Path of Destiny. Uh, De- Destiny, yes. And I I really enjoyed that game, and they have a new game out. It looks exactly, I don't want to say it looks exactly the same. The art style is the same. The mechanics of it are different. The The layout's different, obviously, but the, the art style still has that animated look to it, and it looks fantastic. It played very well. I enjoyed it very much. I'm hoping there is some sort of connection to the world previous, or to, maybe they're set in the same universe, or set, I don't know. Okay. That can reach back to that because it shares a lot of similarities as far as just the look, just the style. So, um, that'd be neat for a connected universe. Yeah. Uh, I, I would like that. I really would like that. So, um, let's see. The, uh, what else did I play out there? I, play, I talked about this. I played a lot of board game type stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, not dead poker. Did, it was something dead hand, I think is what it was called. Something like that. Um, but it was a poker style and, it was, a, it was a card game. It was a poker game, and it was fantastic. The way that they had changed the rules of, of how that worked and what you were trying to do, and then Sagrada, which mm-hmm. was another fantastic dice game there as well. Um, but no, PAX, I think the attendance at PAX was a lot smaller this year. It, see, it felt like it was. It might not have been, but it felt like it was. Now, I remember you saying that uh, you saw True Dungeon. Did you play I only did the demo of True Dungeon. Okay. And demo doesn't really count. Because I told you about this, is that it, yeah. they felt like they were kind of holding your hand to go through it. Yeah, I, was, I didn't know if you, like, you actually did a, a full game. Or no. A, a real, legit. And so they just... couldn't. Those slots were full. Oh. They were. They, they got packed they, fast. If they do that next year, maybe we could, like, if we... If they do it next year, advance. we will... Do, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. If we go and do this thing next year, uh, mm-hmm. we will totally be doing that. Uh, we will definitely be doing that. Mm-hmm. That would be a lot of fun. Oh, it would be fantastic. I would love it very much if we mm-hmm. could do that. So I really, really, God, I really hope we can all go. I really hope we can all go to PAX next year. Yeah. It would be fantastic. PAX South, anyway. Um, but PAX seemed a lot smaller, but um, the floor was, was about the same size. They didn't seem to expand the floor very much from years previous. So far that I could tell, PAX 1 was, or PAX South 1 was very small. PAX South 2 got bigger. PAX South 3 got bigger. And then PAX South 4 didn't get smaller, but it also didn't seem to get bigger. Seemed Maybe to have it's the hitting same its, size. you know, this is... It might. Because I, like, don't know. I don't mind a smaller convention mm-hmm. when they get too big. 
I don't have fun with that. I still say that they had it way too soon in the year. It felt yeah. like it because just some of the maybe that's why it didn't seem bigger yeah. because you know if they could wait till after. It's really tough because if they have if they have PAX South at the end of June January, mm-hmm. if they have PAX South at the end of January. PAX East is like right there at April, yeah. and then there's no PAX until September for uh, PAX West. There's a big gap in between, so a lot of companies are like. Do we do PAX South or should we hit PAX East? PAX East is where we probably want to go. There's more people there. Um, hmm. So it's, yeah, it's a little tough. Someone was saying that um, they heard, uh, I mean, this is just rumor mill, that PAX, might not, uh, PAX uh, Texas might not be in San Antonio next year. Mm, I don't know what their contract is with yeah. the... Uh, with the city? Not the city, but that convention center. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's a contract with the city, but I know the, the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center, you have to... Uh, they may have a contract with them like they do with the one in Seattle that kind of keeps them there for a while. So I am not sure about that. Uh, if they do move it, I don't know where. Uh, there were people talking about that, actually. Like, uh, this city can't support it because they're not pedestrian friendly. Uh, really? Well, not this city, not San Antonio. San Antonio is very I was pedestrian say, I friendly. San Antonio was the there. other cities that we were thinking about, well, they're like, eh, that's not really San pedestrian mind friendly. Austin. I you think about Austin, right? Just because I want to go to Austin. I know you think Austin would probably be a fantastic place for it, but like culture wise and ideological wise. I, I would think I don't necessarily know what the city's built for that number of people. what they want to do exactly. Yeah. Like the way it's the, it seems very nice the way San uh, San Antonio is built is like the convention center's right there and they've got a great the glut of hotels just right there that they can put everybody in. So I don't know. Seems to work that way. But yeah. uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. If they change it. I'll, I'll probably still go. I, I like it in San Antonio. I'm getting used to the. I'm getting used to how San Antonio operates and where things are and how to navigate the city, just like I do with Seattle. Um, so I kind of wish they'd keep it there. I've so. been to the Alamo once. That's all you really need. One time once. at the Alamo and you're done. <laughs> That's really it, dude. Squirrels, balls of steel. <laughs> really? They just come right up to you. They don't care. Pull out a knife and mug you. They do not care. And I don't mean the city, but in the Alamo Park. Okay. Like the, the, the little park area that's yeah. outside the Alamo. They just, they, you know, nothing. They don't care. The Alamo was weird when I went there because, like, I was expecting, like, not to be in the middle of downtown skyscrapers all around it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what I was also expecting, when you, yeah, but not that. Also, I, when you walk in, it's one room. Yeah. With, like, Windows to look in other rooms like, that you can't is, get into. This is what they made a big deal about. Yeah, but it's place. just the one room. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not like it's they make a big deal. I, I it's a historic, I mean, like historically it's a historical is. thing, and it's and it's been there forever. Yeah. I'm actually more impressed with. I, know, I, meant, I know we're not talking games. I apologize. His, historically, the Alamo is a big deal, right? And, and but uh, I'm actually more impressed with um, that oak tree. A couple of those oh, oak yeah. trees that are out yeah, there. Yeah, they're nice and pretty. Um, I guess kind of like how the pyramids. I, I, you know, in my mind, I expect the pyramids in Giza to be like an Assassin's mm-hmm. Creed origin, but no, it's like you know, all the shots you see are from a certain angle. Because if you if, if you, you do it the other way, you yeah, see the, sky, to the camera, there's like McDonald's right there. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, um, I think that's just weird. For the me. other yeah. thing is that mainly the good parts of the Alamo is not the Alamo itself. It's actually the exhibits that are inside, like um, this other walkway that's not at it's not inside the Alamo itself. It's somewhere else. You go through there. And that's where they've got the guns and the there's there's like little pocket Bibles that are old as dirt. I mean, they've been around forever and these keys and all these um, uh, all these different things it just kind of gives you the history of the area. It's fantastic. And there's a little toy. Uh, you got to go check the toy shop again. If you guys go, I'll, I'll give you my little tour of yeah. San Antonio that I know of, which is just it's some great stuff. So I hope you guys can do that. Uh, back to packs. Yes. <laughs> Um, I went there all three days. I enjoyed all three days. I wish I had, um, I wish I had spent more time at some of the more of the indie stuff that I could have seen. And, and, and I forgot my business cards, which was horrible because I had nothing to give out to these people to say, here's who I am. And then they could get in touch with me and let me know that, Hey, thanks for looking at our game. It really kind of sucked that I didn't have the business cards with me. But, uh, uh, it was there's a lot of good gaming but not necessarily video gaming but there's a lot of good gaming there so uh i enjoyed it i look forward to going back uh again and again and i really really look forward to taking you guys with me 
Um, and by you guys, I don't just mean you, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> I mean you and RJ, and if we can get Sarah, and if we can get Nate on board, it would be fantastic. It, that would be a lot of fun. I would love to have the crew up there. So, anyway, it is now time to take another break. We didn't even get to you. I, look at that. I didn't play but one game. And we made it in, a, in the past two weeks, and I got to talk the entire time. Yeah. Something's wrong with me. <laughs> uh, anyway. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Matt's going to tell us what he played. We'll try and jump into the news that we really haven't touched on uh, in the past couple of weeks here. And, uh, yeah, and anything else you want to go over. So give us a call, 334-272-9228. This, oh, so I'm looking for music, right? Okay. And I I found, you know, the Far Cry thing came to mind because of the Steelbook thing. So I went and got Far Cry from the very first game. But then I saw, ooh, Blood Dragon. Let me listen to that. Ooh, that's oh, good, yeah, too. That so that's when great. I grabbed that. Um, anyway, I'd gotten down. I covered Monster Hunter World. I covered uh, Dragon Ball Fight. I covered the releases. And I was like, God, what else is out there? So I do what I normally do. I go to my Steam Friends page and see what people are playing. Mm-hmm. Nope. I've got all that because it's like Player Unknown Battlegrounds and a couple yeah. of other things that I've already pulled music from. So then I go to uh, the top sellers of the week, you know, and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is still in there. But then there's this game. I was like, ooh, let's... I, I, it actually just interested me just then just to know what it was. And then I tried to find music for it, which I did. There's a game apparently just released not too long ago, either this week or maybe last week, called Railway Empire. Yeah. And it's on PC and console. Didn't you uh, put a video, like a little... Intro Today. For, yeah. Yeah, because I was looking... I was telling you guys about it. I was like, I stumbled upon this okay. game looking for music, and now I want to play the game. Old-timey prospector kind. Well, it oh, kind of. Bit, it's, you know, it takes place in 18... I don't know, 1880-something? I don't remember. Um... In the 1800s. How about that? It takes place in the 1800s, and you build a railway line. And basically, it, it reminded me of City Skylines. It's like it's like a city builder, but not, because you're connecting... Railroad? You're building a rail... Well, you're building a railway empire. You're and a business. C- cities build up around them, right? And cities build up around those things, and then you can own the business, and then you can invest the money into banks if you want to. You can invest it into factories and make money that way, and then there's... It's a city building type thing, but it's it's based around uh, building railway connections and railroads. And it doesn't progress time. It's not like you're going to research and then get up to you know bullet trains and all this other mm-hmm. stuff. You're not going to get up to stuff like that. It's going to stay in the steam locomotive era. And it just uh, it really appealed to me. So anyway, I grabbed a track from that. This is called Cowboy Strats. Ooh. And uh, we'll be back with more in-game chat after this.
And welcome back to in-game chats. Uh, I'm Scott. Matt's here as well. We've got uh, music playing from Monster Hunter World. Ooh. It's a battle music that takes place apparently at Rotten Vale. Okay. I know. I just liked it and I was like, okay, I'll go with that one. I need music from Monster Hunter World. I hadn't really played much of the game, so I thought, yeah, there we go. The theme is much more like the theme that plays during the menu. Way like low key, subdued type stuff. Just really low. This was like, hey, nice up action stuff. So I liked it better. Apparently, in the chat room, is it uh, Baldi? I Baldi? Or El Baldi? Or <clears throat> I don't know. Paul? I don't know. Anyway. Um, this is how is it PAX South? Texas isn't for everyone. <laughs> uh, if you were at PAX South, then I, I kind of agree with you that um, San Antonio may not be what you think it is, especially when you deal with the weather there. Holy crap. The wind would cut you when yeah. you were downtown, coming, uh, walking into it or whatever at night and stuff. Oh, man, it, it, it dips. It gets some cold temperatures in uh, San Antonio. So... Let's go to the phones and talk to Multile, who is on the phone with us. Hey, Multile. Oh, hi. Oh, oh, How's everyone doing tonight? We're doing pretty good, and uh, Matt's currently on the phone there. He's answering, but uh, oh, we're doing good. Hill, Hill. There he is. <laughs> Very good. How okay. are you? Ah, so far so good. Um, been enjoying my night. So, how how was the rundown after the whole five hundred episode? Oh, oh, you know, we didn't. I think you and you and Sarah went and got some food. Yeah. Um, RJ went home. I went home. Um, so yeah, we didn't really we didn't really do anything after the show. I'm not one to stay in a suit very long. Went to Mr. <laughs> which makes me sound like some Playboy type thing. But no, actually, no. I just hate wearing suits. So. Uh, I don't stay in a suit very long. <laughs> Stuff's on I, the floor fast. No, yeah, what? I don't use it. I don't get in that suit that often because I don't really have an occasion to. Which I don't is a shame either. because uh, I actually had that one tailored for me when I was in Korea. Um, I don't have I don't have much of a kid. The the last two times I'd wore that suit uh, was a funeral, and that was that was in two years. Well, then I hope you don't wear it that often. Then <laughs> mm. it's not my funeral suit. It is now. It seems to become <laughs> that way. I think uh, was it you that said something like it's, it looks like you're trying uh, no, to sell you, us some yeah. coffins. Yeah, you look like a funeral director. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I saw uh, that message as well. I was but, just like, you know, you could just buy it, buy another tie. Just buy a colorful tie, you know, maybe maybe a nice blue or something, you know, green. That'll yeah. that'll spruce the whole thing up. I you know, I posted that when I when I posted the picture of all of us, I was like, you know, I need to work on my suit game cuz RJ looked nice. Yeah, outside outside of Sarah, who always uh, looked looks better nice. than any of us could ever. Oh, no, it, that was that was levels above any game that you're exactly. going to be able to get. Exactly. Through. That, you know, Nate looked, you know. As far as the suit game was concerned, Nate. RJ RJ beat us. Yeah. Uh RJ yeah. RJ had us like just massively beat on that one. <laughs> so there was, there was no there was no uh there was no way we could battle against that. So. I mean we don't have that class. Uh, well, no, we don't. And dude looked looked yeah. dude looked like he knew I mean like he knew what he was doing. Like this is just a regular day for me. Yeah. You know, suit man. <laughs> and we were just like all kind of uncomfortable looking yeah. like people who don't wear suits look like. Yep. So, anyway. Hey, don't let that impact your own suit game, you know. Focus <laughs> on yourself. Let your own suit game raise up a bit, you know. So there's no, no harm in that. Yeah. Well, what, uh, what's what been going on with you, man? I appreciate all the uh, support you gave us last week and all the, you know, calling in and everything else. I appreciate. Hell, man, I appreciate everything you've done for us uh, over the past uh, years. Don't, don't worry about it. So. Yeah, well, you sure you're giving me you're giving me plenty of content to enjoy. So you know it's the it's the least I can do at the moment. You need to promote some of the content that you do because I yeah. know you've got uh, media. What is it called? Oh, uh, I do a bit of a bit of video editing. Uh, I call it Media Core. Yeah, and I just just every now and then I just post something that I that I feel interested in. I know but you've um, talked you've talked about it before. You've posted about it before. You I, or you've not posted about it before. But I mean, I watched some. I, Basically, I went to your channel the other day because I was looking for video the last the last couple of videos. I was looking for that song, basically, that you used the first time you did an E3 video for us that was also from Crackdown. Oh, yeah. And as I was trying to find that video, you know, I found your channel where you had done some, like, reviews. I think Flint Hook you talked about and 
Mm-hmm. Did some did some kind uh, of like some video some anime reviews. stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. just uh, just a uh, just uh, like I said, a bit of fun. Um, I'm actually working on one at the moment, a game called I O, which is mm-hmm. not. Uh, it's a horrible name for a game. I gotta say, it is just. You know, trying to like if if you started talking about it and someone got pumped about uh, up about it and decided, you know what, that sounds like the game for me, they're not going to find it. They're not going to find it. You know, Google, Steam. Here, it is. It is hard enough to find. You know, it's a hard name to remember uh, when you're you're going to mix it up with things and like. There's a whole genre of games that are like .dot io games, which is uh, well. Again, it could be it could be named a bit better, you know, something something that's relating to the game itself. But I had fun with it. I had uh, it's a bit of a it's like a platformer without a jump. You know, you're using momentum. Uh, you like you're a ball. Sorry, you're, it's a two D platformer game, and you're a ball, and you have to get to the end goal. Mm-hmm. And I just started playing it, and I, I realized that I've been playing it on and off for the past like three or four days, and completed like got like 175 normal levels and 75 really hard levels and i was like oh i've completed all of these levels maybe maybe i should talk about this too but yeah um that's that's one of the games i've been playing on the side um and I'm, i've been darting about here and there with some old games and i've got two downloaded that i'm actually going to play hopefully tomorrow which is oil boy and uh sid meyer's uh civ six oh They're good the, <clears throat> Humble Bundle Monthly. Yeah, um, Civ Six. Uh, Alboy, I think, is actually pretty good, too. Um, but Civ Six, it yeah. It looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. I'm not surprised they took so long to make all that artwork. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard I've heard mixed opinions about the actual gameplay, but you know what? I'm gonna I'm probably going to sink a bunch of time into it just to experience uh, everything that the de- development team have done because that is that just looks amazing. Yeah. And, yeah. Sid Meier's uh, Civ 6, I, with 5, I played 5, one match, by myself, because I attempted a, a whole load with, like, 3 or 4 people. I was like, yes, let's pause this now, and uh, never went back to it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> uh, no. they're just so long, and it's hard to get people back in. So they can be, I played yeah. one round, enjoyed it, so I was like, you know, for £12, I think it is, um, which is, you know, uh, like, for... Oil Boy, I'm already willing to pay, you know, twenty pounds. Mm-hmm. So if I'm getting Sid Meier's Civ Six for uh, for the price included, yeah, hundred percent. I'll give it. I'll give it a, a game run through and see if I win. You really should. I think you'll. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, the Civ is man. I know what I do when I get into a Civ game, man. I've got to. That's prep work. I mm-hmm. got to make sure I got the. It's it's like. Um, <laughs> It's like it's like having a plane. You got to have the runway. You got to have all this stretch of <laughs> because you're gonna you're gonna you need that. You've got to have room for takeoff with that thing because it is going to com- it's going to control your day. Yeah. Um. And so I got to make sure that everything is clear before I get into that. Otherwise, you know, I can't start a game at like seven p.m. That ain't gonna oh, you'll work. You'll be up all night. That I can't do that. I want to get started around eleven in the morning uh, <laughs> if I'm gonna sit down and play that game. So. That's a game you won't ever catch me playing during the middle of the week. Another game that you won't catch me playing for a while. Uh, and I'm really glad I had the trip to Pack South and then the busy work schedule to do this for me because it kind of got me off the the crack of Destiny 2. The, um, the addictiveness of like keeping going back in there, even though I complain about it every weekend on the show. Um, I am now, I am, I've broken from that cycle. Uh, uh, and it feels so good to be free of it. It feels so good to think that, uh, <laughs> you know, it was the other night I was thinking, I can play anything I want to right now. I could load up a, I could go load up a little indie game on my, on my PC and just start playing something if I wanted to. Um, and, and, or I could go, uh, I could, you know, do some more Nintendo stuff that the I haven't world done in is a while. Yours. I know, it just opened up a lot of things instead of thinking, well, before I do that, though, I, do I better go, I better go get my milestones on my Destiny 2, and I don't have to worry about that anymore. I totally missed the, uh, faction rally. I didn't do a bit of it, dude. Yeah. I didn't do any of it. None. I let it come out. I let it, I New let New Barnicky one. I let it release, and then I read the uh, the I read the Reddit uh, of like, wait, they screwed this up. They can't do you know. And then they then they issue a statement like, yeah, we screwed that up. Sorry, we'll listen to you better next time. And then it's just this continuing cycle of not they just they, they, they screwed it up. 
They've screwed it all up. So I'm glad I'm not in the uh, the vicious cycle of having to continually go back and do that over and over and over again. So I'm glad Did it's Did you done. play Borderlands like that, or was Borderlands you know, more of a one-and-done type of thing? Well, oddly enough, Borderlands played on the console, and I played that with James and Kevin, mm-hmm. Kevin oh, I remember. and Jeremy. Uh, we played on the console with, with Borderlands on the 360. Uh, I tried to do Borderlands 2 on the PC. Uh, I waited too long until I had done it, and everybody that I knew playing it was way, way ahead of me. And it just wasn't fun because I really wanted to go in there and bring back that feeling that we had. when Because I know you can play it solo, but I had so much more fun playing it uh, in as a group with friends. I did them solo, yeah. one and done. Yeah. But it was fun. It was fun to play when mm-hmm. it was just us playing. It was it was really a lot of fun and getting loot and that sort of thing. So, um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that was Borderlands. Um, but Borderlands yeah, is that's more meaty. Yeah, because that's what really reminded me of. You know, just the, like the sort of a grindy type of, uh, you know, good mechanic sort of thing. You know, you can, you feel, feel good while you're doing it. And then it's, uh, it sort of fades away if you don't have other people sort of backing you up. Like, my time schedule seemed to be completely yeah. off to everyone else. Well, Destiny, yeah, Destiny 2 really didn't, like, I didn't really team up too much with Destiny 2. It had it had the guided games feature where I could just jump in and wait in, in a queue and wait for people to, to join in if I wanted to. But um, for the milestones and stuff, once you finish the main campaign and once you finish a lot of the stuff to where you're working on a week-by-week basis to that, it doesn't really take too long to get it done, but I had... Um, taking the break away from it I realized that there was no reason for me to continue doing it one of my characters mm-hmm. is at 334 the other one's at 335 I'm good I'm okay uh, we're not, I'm, we're, if, we, if we decide to do a raid or something sure I'll jump in for that I don't think we'll ever get there but um, but from what I've read and, and I did the raid on PS4 and I'm not interested in doing I, I have no uh, there just wasn't anything it was it's not like taking king it's really not like Taken King. It's a whole lot not like Taken King. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I've gotten what I need out of it, and when they revamp or redo or, or do the uh, the new uh, DLC so for this it. this is kind of like vanilla Destiny 2. Once they, you know, spice it up like they did with the original Destiny. A lot of people feel that way. A lot of people say, oh, wow, so we're not going to get the real Destiny 2 until a year before the Destiny 3 releases. <laughs> is that the case? Thanks, Bungie. You'll have everything, you'll have all the kinks worked out and everything. So we're beta testing this for you, basically, is what we're doing. Oh, but how much uh, is it, modern seriously. gaming like that? I don't think modern gaming is anything like that, actually. What, beta testing? Um, not in the sense of what we're getting out of Destiny 2, yeah. no. I all don't right. think so at all. Um... No, I don't. No, 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 not at all. I think I, look at Blizzard. A lot of people like to point to Bungie to say, "Look at what Blizzard did when they did the whole revamp of the economy Diablo. system for Di- Diablo." Yeah, they saw what was wrong, and it was only like a year later that they fixed that, and they fixed it for the better. Mm-hmm. And Destiny is it is not a year. Destiny Two is not a year old, but a lot of people are. Well, I was going to say, like off the back of Destiny, that uh, you know, and Diablo, like the, that sort of comparison. We're working, uh, sorry, they were working with, uh, like, I would assume, what was it, a bifurcated team. So one team was continuing supporting the, you know, the the current Destiny one with more and more, like, upgrades and stuff. And from what I heard, it sounds like they walked a whole bunch of good things back for Destiny 2. And it was like, it was mainly due to another team building Destiny 2 at the same time as they were trying to upgrade destiny one so there wasn't the team mingling and the, yeah, no. the things that they've learned wasn't the, there it wasn't like we're done with one let's move on to two it was you know a bit of a an amalgamation type of thing you yeah know? destiny two was the development of destiny two began with the release of the taken king which was a year later after destiny one um so when destiny when destiny one released the taken king uh, a team split off from the from the main team and started work on destiny two and just like Destiny 1, there was, and I, I can't wait for books to come out about this stuff, uh, just like Destiny <laughs> 1, there was a point that they had put in a good chunk of time to it, and they said, you know what, we got to start all over. we got to scratch all this and start all over. For whatever reason, I don't know what it was, but there was a revamp of it, which is why we got Rise of Iron, which is why we got a year three of Destiny 1, instead of getting Destiny 2 after the Taken King. 
we got that Rise of Iron expansion, which Rise of Iron was supposed to be incorporated into Destiny 2, mm -hmm. but when they when they had to revamp everything, they said, well, let's take Rise of Iron, give it an, as an expansion to Destiny 1, let that go for a year while we fix our problems with Destiny 2, and then we release Destiny 2 next year. Mm -hmm. um, is the story that I've heard. So... Uh, they're, yeah, they're just oh, the other the other thing that was on the rumor mill there as well that they were they are contracted for a certain amount of like uh, not necessarily releases but content potentially with the you know the whole Activision Blizzard you know them joining up with those guys they have a, they have uh, what I understand they have a ten game contract I think yeah well there you go not that's, a ten not ten I'm sorry <laughs> not ten games not ten games they have a ten year contract um. And oh that, well, no wonder they were they were boasting that Destiny is going to be a ten year game at the same time. Uh huh. Yeah. No. 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 They really. I mean, well, you saw in the split they lost Halo, which was their thing. Halo was their bread and butter. And honestly, looking back, I've I, looking back and reading from people who played uh, who continued to play Halo afterwards, they had complaints, but a lot of them have said, you know what, the team that stayed behind and worked on this these Halos games um, are actually doing it better than what Bungie did. Even yeah. though it's well, got three four three studios, I think it is. Uh three four three studios, exactly. Yeah. They're doing they're doing much better than what Bungie did with the with the game. They're giving us all this stuff and, and people seem to be very yeah. happy with the way that is that is turning out for them, apparently. Now, I would say good for them because yeah. it wasn't it didn't work for me. <laughs> like no. after I think what was it, four or five they released and I tried it and I do what I usually do with Halo, I just ramp up the difficulty to the highest and Oh, it did nothing for me. There was a point where I was running about smashing people in the face with, you know, the butt of the rifle because they didn't they didn't provide enough ammo drops for hard, and I was by myself as well. So I'm assuming they they expect more people to be there, and I was just running about hitting hitting people, and I was like, what am I doing? And was I Halo? Was you may have to look this up. Was Halo Four done by the? Because th you didn't play Halo Five, did you? Oh, uh, I, I can't remember which one was which. Halo um, Five is on Xbox it One. Was after Reach. Yeah, Halo 5 is on Xbox One. Oh, it must have been 4. So it must have been 4, but I'm wondering if 4 wasn't, you know, wasn't part Bungie, part 343, whereas Halo 5 and, you know... Uh, it says developers, 343 industries, but uh, yeah, I'm not, that's not to say that they didn't leave over a whole framework. You know, that's not to say that... Yeah. Uh, oh, my brain's just went... Uh, uh, it's, very, it's, it's, a very, it's very possible. I don't know. Again... Books on these things would be great because I love like books on this and whole Ken Levine thing with the uh, with the situation with uh, Bioshock Infinite and how that changed completely from what we had seen. Yeah. I want to I want to know all these things. Why did these things change? What changed? Oh, what? one thing I did hear about this um, again. This is great fine stuff. I, I I heard it from another podcast and a different interview that it was uh, they wanted to produce Destiny as a different game. Uh, they just didn't have the talent for it, so they like all the they wanted it to be I think third person, and like this is a very specific example. They started building it, and their animators that were all for first person that they had in their team just couldn't get the animation stuff for third person because their experience was all in first person, and things just started you know getting compromised from there supposedly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, again, this is grapevine. I don't have a source for this. So right. Anyway. On the same on the same on the same path of this, uh, it was announced uh, this week. I think that um, Anthem is now scheduled for release in early 2019. It was originally supposed to be fall of this Ooh. year, but has been backed up. A lot of people looked at Anthem as like, oh, they're doing the, it's this is EA doing the Destiny thing. I mean, it's Bioware, um, and it's and it's got aspects of d it's Destiny esque. With with what we can tell, we haven't seen really any gameplay. I don't want to say that we've they've they've shown off something no, that no, they've you're called right. you're gameplay. Not, you're completely right when you say that. I I would 100 percent agree. Just agreeing with uh, we haven't seen any gameplay yet. That is that is tailored. You know that is a tailored experience for a stage. You know that's a play. Or yeah. We watched a play last day three. Uh, that and so they've announced that it is, but they are working on it, and it's Bioware and. Uh, They've they, they're still working on it apparently, so we're still going to get uh, we're still going to get an anthem game at some point. And given the way that the player base, that the fans of uh, Destiny have gone, I think they would they would probably welcome something like Anthem with open arms and and give it a go. So 
Seriously, if you look at the subreddit for Destiny, it is not is not good. It's a bunch of pleas oh, of yeah. like, change this, change, change that. Well. Yeah, exactly. So, well, Multal, uh, it's always good talking to you, man, and we appreciate it when you call. No, no, I, thank you very much for the work you, that you're doing. Um, I really enjoy it. So, guys, enjoy your night. I'll see you soon. You All too. Right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, who do we have on two? We got to go to a break, but who do we have on two? Master of Okay, we'll get him. He waited for a very long time, so we'll get him on the phone. Hey, man. Hey, man, it's fine. No, he was calling from Ireland, so I'll, I'll be glad to wait behind yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, what I wanted to say, well, two things. Number one, thank you so much for the 500th episode. Oh, that yeah. That was just incredible. Yeah, did you um, watch it on Facebook? No, no, no. I listened to it on the on the rebroadcast, and you guys did it. I didn't watch the live feed. I didn't know there was a live feed. Excellent. I don't think there, If you go to our Facebook page, the video is posted there. I mean, it's two hours, but cool. you, can, you can see the video there, and it's all done with my phone. So it's not as good as the, the camera work, which, you know, it goes yeah, yeah. back oh, and hey. forth in between hands and stuff. But, yeah, okay. so. That's okay. Cool. I'll do that. I'll check it out. Um, but it was, it was really nice hearing that etymology of how the, how the, the show developed and where you got started. And the, I didn't um, think they were going to buy into putting a show up here talking about video games. I didn't think well, they, would, they would, I didn't think they would accept that, man. I have to say the first time I heard you guys uh, on one of the Saturday broadcasts, I was like, what in the world? Then mm. <laughs> I figured you probably had pictures on someone that you had in there. Right, exactly. A yeah. He must, yeah, he must uh, he must have some uh, <laughs> some kind of bargaining chips to get a get his own show to talk about that. No, no, no. no. They were, you know, the reasoning came down to, and they didn't even care if it was video games. The reasoning came down local. that they wanted local talk. Everybody yeah. else is, uh, yeah. all the other stations who do um, talk radio, it's usually a bunch of syndicated shows filling the day with a couple of local shows, maybe in the morning or the afternoon. That's why, uh, something like that. Next week, I'm going to start my uh, local show about cheese. Yeah, you should. <laughs> you should. Well, all kinds of cheese. But the fun part about the show is that you learn something. Yeah. yeah you well, learn hopefully. something every time, and uh, it's fun. Uh, and just sitting around and people talking about cool stuff. What have you learned um, today? <laughs> um, I learned that I don't want to play the game where you make the kitten and change his name. And <laughs> you all don't? And you like, do or no. you don't want to play I, it? I, I do not. Oh, oh why not? not? You don't want your don't own know, like, Jiminy Whiskers? Jiminy Whiskers. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm one of those old RPG, you know, third-person shooter guys. Um you would like, honestly, thing. I'll tell you what you would like. You would like True Dungeon. Yes. True yes, Dungeon is the, yeah, that's the that. one we talked about. That's live action D&D, yeah. and it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's done in a way like kind of like escape rooms, but it's multiple yeah. of them, and, you know, somebody plays as the bard. Like, had a guy in there who was the bard, and he was supposed, he was, he was instructed to sing songs, and that was going to help I us. I would love that role. Yeah, and he made up a song right there on the spot, and he did a fantastic job with it, too. Um, wow! So yeah, you, you know, yeah. creative game playing. Yeah. Exactly. As a, as a as a director that you are, and a, and an actor that you are, I know you would enjoy yep. that very much. Well, uh, over the Christmas holidays, you know, my son brought his Nintendo Switch home uh, when he was here for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. It was fun getting to see him, and he really he really enjoys it. But we had a, a gathering at our house, and somebody brought this Nintendo Switch game that had a, a several different party games in it. Uh, one of it was. One of them was called the Serial Killer Trivia Party, um, and Ooh. it was absolutely hysterical. But the neat part about it is that everybody could play. Everybody pulled out their, their phones, uh, went on, uh, each game had a certain code. You go on the, the website of the developer. I'll have to look it up and, and I'll let you know what the name yeah, is. Yeah, please do. But it was so much fun because we all had a connection to the game. And there were several different games, and we played several different ones, and we played for hours. And it was hysterical. It was fun. But the fact that they figured out a way that you could use a, a, a platform plus tie in people's cell phones. We had some people playing on their iPads. As long as you had a connection to the Internet, you know, we had a, a router there, everybody could then play the game. And it was great fun. So I'll, I'll have to look that up to figure out who the name of the developer is. But it was, it was uh, on the Switch. And we were like, okay, we're going to play this again. So, nice. Interesting. Um, uh, you know, I I think one of the games I, we uh, suggested to True Dungeon for you, but that's a touring thing, and you pr it's you know, yeah. it'd yeah. be hard yeah. for you to play it. But if you ever get around, if there's ever any time you get a chance to, I think you'd enjoy that very much. But um, you know, the other games that I would suggest maybe that are nice little board games, sit down that a bunch that you know you can have a group of people play was yeah. uh, uh, Sagrada, which was a really good dice game, and we talked about that. Um, yeah. 
There was another game that was in development next to Sagrada, and he only had prototypes there. He did not have uh, much for anyone to pur- purchase, and it was like Path of Light, or I can't remember what it was called. It's really, really cool the way he had done it. Um, basically, he had designed these uh, these lanterns, basically. Um, mm-hmm. And so you put you put light in there, and the lantern goes over on top of that. And the game board are is the designs that are on the lantern. So oh, the projection, yes. Oh, that's yes. cool. So the projection goes out on the on the ground, and then you've got or on the table, and then there's paths of light that your character goes around and can only like move into. Uh, can only move within the circles of the. I don't know the way That's a it was. Cute little gimmick. Oh, it was fantastic! And then if yeah, if yeah. you rolled a certain thing with your dice, you could lift up the shade just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it stretched the shadows, or it or it or it made changed them thinner. The yeah, it completely wow. changed the board. That's cool. It That's was cool. really really cool. Um, and so that was interesting to uh, to see there. And I, I again, you go back to you want to talk about creative ways to play games. That yeah. thing was amazing. Yeah. And I can't remember um I can't remember the name of that game and I wish I could. I, yeah. mm, but it was it was fantastic. So uh I'll, I'll have to recommend that to my son and his friends. They love all those quirky board games. But um one of the ones that we play a lot is the betrayal at House on the Hill. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's so much fun. I love that so one. Fun. I haven't played it in forever because it takes a while and there's a lot of explaining to do, but I yeah. love that one. Well, that's the thing. Once you figure out what you're doing, it's like, oh, okay, this is great. So, uh, it and it, was every great. game is different, and oh yeah, and uh, it's it's a fun, fun game. Yeah, so. we appreciate you calling, man. We we got to take a break, but uh, appreciate right. you calling Thank in you. as always. Keep up the good work. Appreciate good it, guys. One. Thank you. Bye bye. Maybe when we come back, we'll find exactly what Matt has played. <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> we might find out what he's played. Uh, so anyway, going into break here, uh, it was announced in the news that Rainbow Six Siege would be going up in price, just the base game. Yeah. And then they got a lot of feedback saying, like, no, don't do that. They were going to add stuff to it. It was going to be the base game, but they're going to add a bunch of t- a bunch of stuff to it, and but still raise the price. And they said, no, don't do that. Uh, so this morning, they backed off of that and said, fine, we'll leave the main game at the base price, but you're only going to get this stuff. And to get everything else, you're going to have to pay. They're going to raise the price of some of the other... Uh, tiers, DLC tiers, the tiers of the of the game that you can buy it at. So, um, anyway, uh, music from Rainbow Six Siege. This is the main theme for that. And we will be right back with Morning Game Chat after this.
And welcome back to in-game chat, uh, episode three of our twelfth season here. Digging How's the jams. Yeah, this is good. Uh, I'm Scott. This is Matt, and that's our last little segment here for the show. Uh, this music comes from. It was a game that uh, while I was playing with uh, Spigot and Josh, Brock and Josh uh, last night for Monster Hunter. Uh, he, uh, Brock had mentioned that yeah, I've been I've been stuck playing this game for a while, and that game he mentioned was Subnautica, which is mm. what this is. This is uh, a track called "Into the Unknown" from Subnautica. So one of my coworkers was telling me about that game. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it just came out of um, I guess early access, early access. Or whatever, yeah. So now it's officially released. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of interested in it, I think. I don't yeah. know. Well, I, yeah. I, sometimes music can draw me into a game, and this does. Blood Dragon is doing that. The Railway game was doing that because not the the Railway Empire game. Just seeing what it was was that. But then some of the music is like it, again, it's set in like what eighteen thirty or something like that. Um, there was a lot of uh, ragtime piano yes. for background music. It was just like, oh, that's fantastic. Um, Master Thespian, if you are still listening, the game with the lanterns that we were trying to come up with is a game called Lark Lamp. L-A-R-K and then Lamp. It's by a uh, company called Lumo Amuso. If you go to lumoamuso.com, L-U-M-O-A-U, I'm sorry, L U M O A M U Z O dot com. You'll see the game, and there's uh, they did a Kickstarter for it, and it's successful, and so you'll see exactly what I was talking about. It's fantastic. So, Matt, yes, what have you played recently? <laughs> now that we've gotten to that point, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier in the show, um, I finally platinumed a game on the PlayStation, and that was Assassin's Creed uh, Origins. Origins. Yeah. So I've done. Congrats! Did you yeah. get to? Did you get to a point where you're like, oh, I'm pretty much done with this game, and then look at your trophies and be like, I could go do that real quick. Or no. did it just pop up and you're like, Oh, hey, I platinumed. Well, I I knew I was getting close to platinuming because yeah. I you know I'd already beaten the story. I'm going through doing the other stuff, mm-hmm. but uh, I still really want to just. Uh, right now they're doing the Trials of the Gods. And so I've already, you know, beaten Anubis and, um, uh, uh, oh, not set, um, the crocodile one. And I can't believe, uh, the, uh, the name of the, the god is, uh, escaping me right now. I, I don't remember either. Yeah. But anyways, um, yeah, cause like crocodile, uh, crocopolis, crocodopolis. <laughs> They released the uh, yeah, DLC anyways, for Yeah, the it, DLC right? is uh, out, and that's you know another thing I want to get. Um, so yeah, I, I, I platinum that. Um, still really enjoy it. Um, I went back and started playing a little bit more of uh, Syndicate, mm-hmm. and I'm still in World War One, you know, area, you know, of, of the game, and going from origin to that is, it's rough actually. <laughs> Um, trying to, you know, the traversal is different between the two games. So I'm still trying to like run around like in origins and, you know, I'm, yeah, it, it's, it's, I'm having to like rethink how I play the game. Yeah. Um, so I did a little bit of that. I was like, uh, all right. Um, the new, uh, elusive target is out for Hitman. Okay. Um, and it came out yesterday. And uh, I think it's the Gunrunner is this one, and okay. it's in Marrakesh, mm-hmm. which is uh, not one of my favorite levels. Just because you know I, I played it, you know, I, and everything, I kind of enjoy the other ones a little bit more. But I mean, I don't hate it. It's it's an interesting level. It's different. Yeah. But uh, I did that this morning, and I was able to. Uh, Sarah asks, "It was Sobek." Sobek, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you think I'd remember that? I hear it so much in the game. But, um, uh, yeah, for the elusive to- uh, target, you know, I went through and I played it this morning. And, man, the thing I really like about those is until you actually kill the target, you could restart. Mm-hmm. So I would m- messed up, and he was, like, around a whole bunch of bodyguards. And I shot him, but it didn't kill him. And he started running away, and they all started, you know, like, looked at me. And I'm like, oh, I think I could plan this better. So I was able to go back and sort of, like, replan you know, that mission, and I did it, and I got the target, and I was able to, you know, make my 
quick escape, and uh, I felt really satisfied. I, I love how the elusive targets just really ratchet up the suspense because, you know, w- once you pull that trigger, you're you're stuck in with that motion that you have to follow through. Yeah. And, and w- if you fail it, then it's it's gone. So I, I really enjoy that. Um, Kevin and I have been playing more uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. We beat the Predator. Nice. We were so happy about that. You were having issues with that when I oh, watched your we first were. stream with it. Well, see, like, because he was like, well, people seem to be doing this, you know, single player, you know. You know, like alone, and I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I don't get it. You know, why are they? You know, why are they finding it so easy? I'm like, well, because when you play it by yourself, you still have three AI teammates that you know fire back and you know help you out. We were, I think, really doing it the hardest way is just two players. You know, if we had like you know a full you know team of four people, mm-hmm. it would be a lot easier. Or if I would have done it by myself, you know, with the AI, it would have been a lot easier because, you know, you have more people there. If you just do it just two people, that is really the hardest way to do it. Uh, but we were able to do it. And, like, we finally, like, after a couple of tries, <laughs> we were, uh, we were, like, finally got him down. And, you know, he stops, you know, the Predator stops moving around, stops firing. And he just starts laughing. And so Kevin just, like, walks up oh, to no, him. Oh, no, no, you don't, you know, that's when you run, man. Yeah, you know, I know. You, you know that. I know. Kevin didn't know that, did he? Oh, well, he should. He's seen the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you and so don't. he, like, walks up to it. He's, like, looking at it. I'm like, Kevin, run. He's like, what? I'm like, he's laughing. You remember in the movie? He's like, oh. So he starts booking it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. No, no. He was did able to get away. He okay. made it out from the explosion. Because if you don't make it out of the explosion, then you still failed the mission, didn't you? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't want to find out. Hmm. So we were able to do that. Uh, which is really nice. And then they have another um, uh, challenge, I think El Tigre or something like that. El Tigre or something. Uh, we did that. And we're, you know, we're still like running through. We haven't 100% of that game where we still have some areas that we need to unlock and like just some little collectible stuff. But it's still it's just fun to play. You know, even doing missions that we've already beaten, going back through, you know, it's just I really like Ghost Recon Wildlands. I, I've had a lot of fun. I've so got my money's worth out of that game. Yeah, you really have. You know, and, you know, just Kevin and I just messing around with that is just a lot of fun. Um, and that, uh, really, I think that's about... No more Battlefront 2? Uh, I, I beat the, um, the campaign and the DLC campaign. Uh, that leads into, um, I, I guess, uh, Last Jedi. Yeah. yeah it does. It leads yeah, it leads to, into yeah, Last Jedi. You told Jedi. me that. Yeah, you told me. So, yeah, yeah I beat those. That. I know, like, Sarah's doing uh, Battlefront 2 multiplayer, and that's great. Uh, it never really interested me in the multi- as a multiplayer game. That's what it is, though. I know. But I, the interesting part for me was always the campaign. And that's just how I am with... But you didn't like the campaign. Well, no, I, I, I did. I didn't necessarily like the choice that they decided to go with the storyline. Of course not. Right. Exactly. Doesn't mean I didn't like it. I'm just like, I mean, personally, I was like, oh, no, I would never have done that. I was, right. You may have enjoyed was, playing it. But... Yes. I was rooting for the bad guys the whole time, mm. you know. So that part of it, you know, I really liked. And it also got me ideas for, like, one of my next costumes I'm going to be working on. Okay. Is um, Hask, the, the guy that stays true to the Empire. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was actually talking to uh, one of my uh, guys in the um, the Five Hundred First Legion today. He wants to do Del Mico, the one that you know became a rebel. Yeah, I have so, no idea. I haven't watched. I haven't played that, yeah. that campaign. But I, I mean, even watched somebody play the campaign. For me, I, I I like Star Wars stories. You know, multiplayer is you know fun. I guess it's fine. It's just not what I go into it. You know, for, so like when they said we're going to have a campaign that you could play through, I'm like I I don't care how short it is, which it is kind of short. Uh, I don't care, whatever, this is a story in the Star Wars universe, I'm going to try it, because mm-hmm. that's what I enjoy. So, I, I like that. I haven't, like, yeah, I haven't done the, you know, the single, I mean, the multiplayer for it. It's just not really a thing. And we did a ri- uh, couple of strikes last night in Destiny 2. Oh, did you? Yeah. Who? You and Kevin? And Jeremy. Okay. All right. uh, Kevin actually, like, we were doing the Serviton song. Mm-hmm. And, like, right before we got to the end boss, his computer crashed. Oh, no. So we had some random guy just jump in. Okay. And, you know, it's like, oh, well. Wow. Uh, yeah, we went to, you know, 
I loaded up Destiny 2, and like that's when I found out, oh, I missed the faction rally. Oh, well. And uh, Zur, I, I went to look at him, and I'm like, I already had the sweet business. Evans wants to know if you play uh, The Old Republic. Um, I used you to. Did. I mean, I did. I did, too. Yeah, we, we yeah. did. We put uh, James, a lot myself, of hours and that Matt. And yeah. yeah we all put, this is we, back when you had to pay for it before it became free. Exactly. This was way <laughs> back in the beginning, man. Yeah. And when it did become free, we were, we were already beyond it. We were already yeah, done Yeah, I think it. I'd move on mm-hmm. by that point. I loved playing Empire on that one, though, because when I switched over to the, uh, to the Empire to play, I was really enjoying myself. Uh, and I stopped in the middle of that, so I never actually finished my Sith Inquisitor path. Okay. So. And I enjoyed the storylines for that. I enjoyed... Uh, I mean, Old Republic's not my favorite timeline in uh, the Star Wars universe. You know, I'm still, you know, Galactic Empire kind of guy. But it was interesting to see, you know, because I I read the old Tales from the Jedi comics back in the day. Uh, uh, The uh, Old Republic, not to the Old Republic games. Mm -hmm. I, you know, played both of those and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not like I don't know about that time Mm -hmm. frame. All right. But yeah, so yeah, that's really what I've been playing. Sorry, just noticed what the clock was. Yep. I'm glad you got that in because it is time for us to go. Want to thank everybody for joining us in the chat room and everybody listening on the stream and on the radio as well. Want to thank Chris, Master Thespian, and Multile for calling in as well. Uh, thanks to everybody who grabs us each week from iTunes. And either way, you get our show for later use. We do appreciate it, whether it's from YouTube or anything else. Go to ingamechat.net and join us on Twitter, Facebook. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You're watching us on Twitch. Subscribe there as well. If you're on Steam, join our Steam group. We've got a group on every single platform for you, with the exception of, I think, the Switch. But uh, we're there on PS4. We're there on Xbox One. Um, we're on the computer. We're on Discord. So you can join up with us on Discord as well if you'd like to do that. Uh, all those places. We've got a group for Monster Hunter World now. So I want to thank a everybody. Yeah, squad. Uh, So thank you all. Have a fantastic week. And RJ will be back with us, and uh, we will see you next Saturday. I leave you here with music from Far Cry, the very first one. Uh Uh, So we'll, uh, we'll leave it at that, and we'll see you next Saturday. Thanks for watching, and thanks for listening.